Then we have the clock on board, we have the satellite, and the satellite is able to send this signal. We have on ground a receiver with an appropriate capacity to generate the same pseudo code and to measure the time of flight of the signal. Let's see just one equation which helps in understanding what we measure. You remember the game of measuring free satellites. We measure a range, which is the time of the the time of flight, which is given by the epoch at which we receive the signal minus the epoch at which the signal started from the satellite. This is the difference in the two time tagging. We multiply by the velocity of light and we obtain a pseudo range, a distance, which is the distance between the satellite and the receiver. This is a three dimensional quantity, so we measure three clock and we can write three equation where the unknown are the three coordinates of the receiver. We need to know the satellite position and this comes in the navigation message. We have to know when the satellite, the signal left the satellite and this comes in the navigation message and this is what we measure the time of arrival. So you see that the, with three satellites, three equation, three unknowns, the system is perfectly solvable from the mathematical point of view. Unfortunately, the situation is a little bit more complex because, yes, the signal starts from the satellite and arrives to the receiver, but the travel is quite long, 20,000 kilometers, and so the signal has to cross the atmosphere, maybe bouncing on a building. It is arriving in our receiver that may have some fluctuation, some noise. And the satellite is telling us at what time the signal left. Is the satellite clock correct? The satellite, the satellite is telling us the position of the satellite. Is this position correct? So there are many different issue that we have to take into account in this equation. This equation would be very clean, very easy, but unfortunately we have to make it a little bit complex. What we measure is not exactly a range, a distance, but it is a pseudo range, a pseudo distance, because yes, we measure a difference between the two clocks, we multiply by the velocity of light, but this contains many things the true distance, but also the offset of the receiver clock with respect to a certain reference time, the offset of the satellite clock with respect to the reference, and then the delay of the ionosphere, of the troposphere, other electronic delays. So we see that the clock error of the receiver and of the satellite with respect to the reference time is an issue. And uh, as we said, we have to estimate the free coordinate of our receiver and the offset of the receiver clock with respect to the reference is the fourth unknown to be estimated. The position of the satellite and also the offset of its clock with respect to the reference are information coming from the satellites. And then we have the ionosphere, the troposphere and other delays which are to be taken into account. So you see the equation becomes a little bit more complex. Again, we need uh, um, four satellites because we have four unknown and we need in some way also to cope with all these other terms, estimate, user model, measure. One important issue is the ionosphere. The ionosphere is a sort of layer around the Earth, which is uh, full of um, ions which change the velocity of the electromagnetic signal and depending if the satellite is directly on your head or if you have very low inclination the layer of the ionosphere is different so the influence on the satellite signal is different and we can see the effect of the ionosphere with this nice uh, uh, video. This is due the 
the ionosphere is due to the sun activity. The sun is radiating and in some cases uh, more energy and even particles are emitted in a solar flare and they arrive against the Earth. You see the Earth as the magnetic field which is shielding the Earth, but the magnetic field is such that this energy can in part come back particularly at the pole, and create the very nice um, effect of the northern light, which are wonderful to be seen, but terrible on electromagnetic signal. And this signal can be quite um, perturbed by the ionosphere. Not only this uh, um, energy coming from the sun, the particle coming from the side, the sun can enter in the crystal quartz, for example, and make some damage to the clock. So ionosphere is a very important issue. Other issues are algorithms, and uh, on algorithms I could talk for another tutorial because it's my job. There are many things to be processed, uh, and uh, algorithms are um, sometimes known, sometimes they need to be developed for this type of problem. Let's write again the pseudo range equation. I told you, for example, the satellite is telling you which is the offset between the satellite clock and the reference time. What is the reference time? Imagine if we have many clock, the reference time is a sort of ensemble time, a sort of average of our clock. This is what happens. GPS, for example, as a reference time, which is called GPS time, obtained by the average of all the clock with a Kalman filter. The European Galileo system is using as well the clocks of the ground segment and um, defined the Galileo system time with a weighted average of the clocks and they are both steered versus UTC. So first algorithms is necessary to define the reference time. Then we need to estimate this offset. Once the satellite is on board, how can we know which is the offset of that remote clock with respect to the reference times, which is maybe on ground in the control center? So again, this um, quantity is estimated by using the pseudo ranges. In the case of the user, the unknown are the user coordinate and clock offset and the satellite position are known. If you are in the control center, this is the other way around. You know the position of the monitor station, you know the position of the control center, and you use the same pseudo range equation to estimate the clock offset and the satellite position. So this is again an estimation, a processing tool, which is based in some case on the Kalman filter, in some case on least square batches, and so on. And then uh, last important uh, things, what is transmitted by the satellite is a prediction. In fact, the satellite is telling you, my clock has five nanoseconds offset with respect to the system time. How can he know? The control station some hours ago estimated with all the measurements that the clock on satellite X had maybe one nanosecond offset and using previous measurements they were able to see, estimate, that the clock of that satellite has an offset which is growing, growing with a certain low so they can predict what will happen in the next hours. And so when you are a user and you receive the message from the satellite, you receive what the satellite is predicting to have as clock offset based on the information that was estimated on ground some hours ago and then uploaded to the satellite when the satellite was in view of the uploading station. So prediction is something which is again quite important for uh, signal processes and timekeeping. Uh, GPS started with prediction valid one day. Galileo, for example, uh, plans 100 minutes validity for the prediction. And also the orbit is predicted. Everything the satellite tells you is based on previous measurements 
um, carried out and processed on ground and uploaded to the satellite. So when we measure the clock on board, when we want to evaluate the clock behavior for navigation or for timekeeping, we have many data analysis, many algorithms to develop. And for sure, we would like to have measurements very good, like this one, for example, whose prediction would be straightforward. But reality is a little bit more complex. We can have missing data, we can have outlier, we can have jumps. If you measure the clock on board, for example, you can have behavior like this one on the frequency where there is a jump, some strange additional noise, or you can have, for example, you can see here for a certain period more noise than usual. So this is the type of activity giving rise to many possible development for algorithms and signal processing. We abandon this um, topic because we want to come back to the fact that global navigation satellite system disseminate time. So we said, uh, again, the same equation, your receiver, even if you don't know, is able to estimate the offset between the clock of the receiver with respect to the reference time of the system. Let's suppose you have a GPS receiver. You can estimate the offset of your clock with respect to the GPS time with a special receiver, which is called timing receiver, to which you have connected your local clock, you can estimate the offset with respect to the GPS time. Then in the navigation message, there is an additional information. The satellite system is telling you which is the predicted offset of the system time scale with respect to UTC. For example, GPS is telling you which is the predicted offset of GPS time with respect to UTC USNO, which is a realization of UTC at the US Naval Observatory. So you can take this information, this information, you sum the two information, and you can estimate which is the offset between your receiver clock and UTC as broadcast by the GNSS. So this is how a user can get access to UTC through the GNSS timing dissemination service. So you can have access to UTC. UTC is disseminated by GNSS. We have seen the effect of clock and timekeeping in navigation system. Now let's go to the meteorological side and say, UTC, Coordinated Universal Time, what is it? And let's see what we can discover about that. <music>